rejoice and be glad in it. It's another Sunday morning where we have been allowed the opportunity to rise out of our beds to worship the Lord our God who is indeed worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Somebody didn't make it to this morning. So for that, we tell the Lord thank you. On this day, for our virtual viewers, we hope that your eyes are wide open and you see the goodness, the grandeur of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And so if you're in your own little virtual space right now, I ask that you would give the Lord a great hand clap of praise, not because of encouragement, temple, not because of your family, but because the Lord, he is good. And his mercies endure forever. We thank God for each and every one of you that are here so far. Those that are on their way, our virtual viewers, we thank God for you. And we hope and pray that even as you are getting yourself together, yeah. even as you are focusing your mind and your heart on the Lord, that you would join us throughout this worship experience. And so for that, I ask that you just join me in a brief moment of prayer where we invoke the spirit of our God, where we welcome him into this place. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Oh, God, we thank you, Father, for being our God. Father, we thank you for this day that you've allowed us to experience, oh, God, because you are worthy of all the praise. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, you are worthy to be praised. And, oh, God, today we ask that even as we are going throughout this worship experience, O King of Glory, we ask that you would inhabit the praises of your people both virtually and in person, O God. Those that are on their way in their vehicles, O God, would you inhabit the praises of your people. Let your spirit fall fresh on this place, O God, that you will receive the glory, that lives will be encouraged and changed all for the victory of you through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you and we praise your name. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and lay it all down at your feet today. Amen and praise God. Again, I welcome you to Encouragement yeah. Temple Ministries where we worship the Lord Jesus Christ. We hope and pray that as you are with us, that you will sing when we sing, that you will pray when we pray, that you will praise when we praise, that you allow the ministry of music, the glory of our God, to resonate in your space as we worship him. We'll be led in song by our music ministry team. Will you receive us all and sing with us as we worship our God?
Verses 1 through 13. And this is what it reads. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. 
Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art God, yes. the God of my salvation. O thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O God, thy tender mercies, thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Mm. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercies, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Mm. The meek will be got, will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, until such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Mm -hmm. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, uh -huh. for it is great. Yes. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. That is the word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. You can be seated in his presence.
Don't let this moment pass you by where you're able to cast all your cares upon the Lord Jesus Christ because he cares for you. Let us pray. Eternal God, King of glory, the Lord who is strong and mighty, the one who was, who is, and who is to come, the one who does not change, you are immutable, indestructible. You are all-powerful and self-sufficient. You don't need our help with anything, oh God. You reign and you rule. You are a sovereign and majestic God. And great is your name and worthy to be praised. Amen. Father, we come before your presence, oh God, thanking you for another opportunity that we know that we are not worthy of. Father, we don't say that lightly, Father, because we know that we messed up yesterday, we messed up last week, last month, last year, and quite frankly, some of us have messed up within the last 30 to 45 minutes, even coming into worship, oh God. But Lord, we are standing, some are kneeling, some are sitting at their seat in their virtual spaces saying, Lord, thank you for another chance. Thank you for your grace and mercy that are new every day. Thank you that you continue to be faithful to us, even as your word declares to a thousand generations. We thank you that you continue to make a way. And even as the song declares that every time we turn around, Lord, you keep making a way. Father, there is none like you. No one stands beside you. No one can compare to you. No one is above you. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. You own everything, oh God. You created everything with a spoken word. Yes. And Father, because we know the depths of your power, we ask that even right now, oh gracious God, that you will continue to speak into our lives. Father, the reality is that while we are standing here, even looking all made up, glamoured up, Father, someone is torn up on the inside. Someone has a broken heart, oh God. Someone is suffering from depression. Someone doesn't feel that they are worth it. Father, and so we pray, oh God, that you would unclutter our minds, that you would take us back to our first love in you. That you will restore the joy of our salvation. That we would not be content with happiness, but we want to be whole. Father, that we will have joy unspeakable. That we can truly say without fear of contradiction that this joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Father, we need Jesus' joy. Yeah. Help us to remember, oh God, where you have called us from and out of. That you alone saved us from the muck and the miry clay. Father, you alone were the one that wiped the tears from our eyes when we got ourselves in mess that we couldn't get ourselves out of. You alone, oh God, kept us when we lost our loved ones. Father, we felt like we couldn't go any further. It was you, it was you God. who wrapped us in your arms and whispered, I will never nor forsake you. Father, we thank you that your love grows deep and wide. We thank you, Father, that nothing shall separate us from a love of God that is found in Christ Jesus, not in this world, not in our cause, not in our jobs, not in our families, not in our bosses, not in our social acquaintances, but only found in Christ Jesus. Yes, God. Yes. 
So, Father, take us back to the cross. Will we truly remember the selfless sacrifice that you made for us? That we just don't remember it on Good Friday the next two weeks. But every day help us to remember that he who knew no sin became sin. Why? So that we may become the righteousness of God. Father, we thank you that you thought we were worth dying for. We thank you that your word is true. That we can stand on it, we can trust it, we can be led and guided by your word. Yes, God. Father, we thank you that your word brings life. Your word is life. Yes. So, Father, give us this day oh, our daily bread. Yes. Father, and help us to eat and eat until we want no more. Father, fill us afresh. Fill us to the overflow. <laughs> Father, give us a mind that is willing to chase after you. No matter what is happening in our lives, for us to keep our eyes stayed on you. The author and the perfecter of our faith. Help us to have the testimony of God of Paul that I have been crucified with Christ. And no longer live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Help us to hold on to that and to have that same level of commitment, oh God. Father, I'm just coming before your presence because we need a refreshing. We need a renewing, oh God. This life is more than just about creature comfort, comforts, oh God. So help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. To have a different set of priorities. Knowing that as we belong in you, that our home is not here. But our home is in glory with you. Father, I lift up everyone under the sound of my voice. Both virtually and in person, oh God. And pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ that you would heal them where they are broken. That you would make every crooked, crooked path straight. That you would heal their minds, their will, and their emotions, oh God, that it will be focused on you. Lord, for that individual that feels like they're all alone, isolated, that no one cares. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would surround them with your angels, surround them with your love, surround them with the fullness of your Holy Spirit. That they will walk around with a smile on their face and they will be encouraged in the innermost being. Knowing that indeed you are with them, that you see them, that you have not forgotten about them. Father, settle their minds from the tricks of the enemy who seeks to disarm them so that they would not be equipped for battle. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will re-equip your people for battle, oh God, that they will have every armor necessary to fight against the wiles of the enemy. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will help them to stand flat-footed to stand with boldness and confidence, knowing that they're not fighting alone. And when they feel that they can't go any further, oh God, that they will know that all they have to do is stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Father, we pray that you will continue to be with our youth and our children and our schools, Father. Father, every day we hear about shootings nearby and even on the campuses of our schools. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will render any event ineffective in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that tries to come against our children, molestation, abuse, words of disencouragement. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that it will be ineffective. 
that those seeds of mediocrity will be uprooted, taken out, and cast into the pits of hell. In the name of Jesus, those thoughts of suicide will be uprooted and cast out into the pits of hell. In the name of Jesus, Father, we need you. Father, there's so much going on in this new generation. Father, will you steer them back to you? Let them know that they're not too young to trust you. To love on you. To stand for you. Father, I pray that you would be with those across these seas, our military. Father, there are still wars and rumors of wars. And there's someone's brother. Someone's sister. Someone's son, someone's daughter, someone's mother, someone's father, God, someone's niece or nephew, Father, and they are fighting for this country that may not even care about them. Father, but we pray for safety, that you will return them home, oh God, in one piece, that their mind will be Stable, oh God. We bind the spirit of post-traumatic stress disorder in the name of Jesus. Father, that you will return them, oh God. That you will help them even while they're on foreign land to still represent you. Yes. Father, we pray for the missionaries, the evangelists, those that don't even get a name on a program, but yet they're still going out knowing that the harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. My God. Father, we pray that you would give them power and authority, that you will anoint them afresh, that they will be encouraged to keep going, knowing that their labor is not in vain. And those that suffer for you, those that suffer with you, shall also reign. Now, Father, we know that even as we prepare to close this prayer, that you don't get tired of hearing of our concerns. So, Father, I pray that you will continue to give us the victory in our lives. That you will continue to settle us in you. That you will continue to do the miraculous in us. Transform us today for your glory and be with every preacher. Oh, God, that is standing behind this sacred desk. Lord God, that this would not just be another sermonic exercise, oh God, but they will preach with power, authority, with clarity and conviction. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That salvation will come to this world, oh God. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Even for Pastor E.D. Reed. Father, we pray that you will be with him as he speaks. Will you do a new thing, oh God? Do a new thing, Holy Spirit. Lord, you are the potter. He is. We are the clay. Make us and mold us. Oh, God, have your way. Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ, and we thank you for the forgiveness of sins. And we thank you that you hear us every time we pray. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we declare to be so. And we walk with our heads held up high, knowing that we have the victory because we belong to you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen.
he's awesome this morning? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. How do you know he's awesome? You ain't here this morning. He's awesome. should have taken you out. He hid you from the rain. He hid you from the storm. For some of us, he kept us in the midst of the storm. For some of us, he's keeping us right now in our storm. Because he's awesome. Some people have lost their minds through some of the stuff that we've been able to conquer. That we've been able to go through. It's not because we got it all together or know everything. It's because he's awesome. Because he's a deliverer. Because he's a way maker. Because he's a burden bearer. Because he's a God of breakthroughs. <laughs> because he's great. Because he's mighty. Because he's holy. Because he's righteous. Because the human vocabulary is so minor. The only thing we can say is he's awesome. That's the best we can come up with. That's our best to describe him. He's awesome. He's undescribable. 
the best words in the world can't explain who he is and what he does and how he does and how he moves. But because we all know that he's awesome, that's the best we can give him. And understanding our best is not good enough. <laughs> because when we look back how he kept us yesterday, we look back and see how he kept us all week long. How when some of us woke up this morning, we were tired in our bodies. We had to push to get him, but because he's awesome, because he's mighty, because he's worthy. Because he gave us the strength that even though we felt weak, it's something about the name of Jesus that strengthened us. Then let the weak then say that we are strong. Hey, because he is awesome. Because he's an awesome God. I won't let that soak in right now. He's awesome. Your situation may not be favorable. But because you serve an awesome God, and we know that all things work together for our good, that he's going to deliver us. I don't know about y'all, but I'm grateful that he's awesome. There's none like him. And I'm glad that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That he's not a respected person.
just bask in his glory right now. virtual viewers you decided to spend your time with Encouragement Temple. We thank God for you. Look you all there as a word from the Lord. Oh, you need your Bible. I'm sorry, your Bible's right here. Let me bring it to you. Amen. Word from the Lord will be found in the Gospel according to Luke. Luke, the seventh chapter. We like to look at verses 18 through 23. And in this first Sunday of the month of April, y'all, time is flying. We're in the month of April. Next month, school will be out. And I know. School will be out. It felt like it just started yesterday. We look at she said, Oh Lord. Look like verses uh Luke the seven chapter verses eighteen through twenty-three. You have it, say amen. I got it. Amen. All right. All right. The word of the Lord reads as follows. Then the disciples of John reported to him concerning all these things. And John, calling two of his disciples to him sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the coming one? Or do we look for another? When the men had come to him, meaning Jesus, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the coming one? Or do we look for another? At that very hour he cured many of infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. Jesus said to them, go and tell John the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the dead hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. He said, and, and, and blessed is he who was not offended because of me. The other word offender who has fallen away because of me. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his words. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Man, for these few moments, we like to preach on the topic. I don't quite understand this. I don't quite understand this. If you're like me, you've always wondered why does bad things happen to good people? We've all questioned that in our Christian walk. 
We see it every day. We'll look on television. We see drug dealers prospering and we're living for God and we're struggling and we're wondering, Lord, why are they prospering and they're not living for you? But God, I'm doing my very best to hold your standards. I'm doing my very best to live this life accordingly. I'm doing my very best to do what your word says and it feels like and it seems like my struggles are real. Lord, I don't quite understand this. God, you have the power to change my circumstance and yet every day I see my circumstances haven't changed but yet people are out there lying on their taxes, getting $15,000. I'm being honest on my taxes and I'm owing the IRS. Lord, I don't quite understand this. God, I don't understand that I can go to the doctor and be diagnosed with cancer, but yet this person is drinking and smoking every day and they look like they're healthy and they're the healthiest man alive. God, I don't understand it. God, you tell me to spare the rod, spoil the child, and God, I'm giving the rod, but it looks like my kids are continually at crazy, but yet and still, God, this person who don't care about your statues, it look like their kids are just sitting there, and it'll be, God, I don't understand this. God, I don't understand how that I want to perform and do things according to the will of God, and right now, I'm hurting in my back. God, I don't know quite understand it. Yeah, I'm hurting my back. <laughs> we all, if we want to be honest with you, that's a question that we struggle with, and I don't care how long you've been saved, you still struggle with that question to this day. Lord, I'm suffering hell. Lord, I'm going through it. Lord, I, I know things should be better. But God, the world is prospering. Why? I cannot and I do not understand this. If the truth be told, as long as we continue to live this life, we would never understand why things happen the way they do. But one thing we have to understand that in spite of the way things are, in spite of the pain and the issues that we're going through, in spite of the heartaches, it could be worse. We could be going through without the Lord on our side. We can struggle without anything to hold us together. In spite of all that, I understand that sometimes we just need answers. Because in our minds, this is not the way it ought to be. And that's like John the Baptist in our text. We're informed at this moment, John the Baptist is in prison. He's in prison because he confronted Herod about, about, about I said about, I'm sorry, about marrying his brother's wife. John the Baptist doing what God has told him to do, confronts him. And in the midst of confronting him, the wife said, what do you want? He says, she says, I want John the Baptist's head on the platter. You got to understand John the Baptist wasn't on the street selling drugs. He wasn't out there casting light. No, he was out there preaching the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. But he ends up in prison. And now John the Baptist is on death row. His sentence is coming. Where the warden will bring him in front of the people and execute him. In the midst of execution, in the midst of being in a cell chained from on your arms, chained on your ankles, chained, and you've been preaching, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. You baptized the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You was the one that told the world that this is our Messiah. He comes to forgive men of their sins. Now you're sitting in a position that you don't quite understand and now the time is about to be up in your life and you, he noticed that the kingdom has not come yet and now he begins to question God. 
Is that just like us? When things are going well, we proclaim that the Lord is good, the Lord is great, the Lord is a savior, the Lord is a healer. But then when it knocks on our door, we begin to question, Lord, is it you? Are you who you say you are? Or do we need to seek for something else? God, I don't quite understand this. Are you the one that I need to be listening to? Or do I need to listen to another? This is not coming from no anybody. This is coming from John the Baptist, who Jesus says came in the spirit of Elijah. Talk about it. Talk about it. And so what Jesus understand is John the Baptist was ordained to do what he's supposed to do. But yet and still, because he was ordained doesn't mean he doesn't go through a weak moment. The reality is you can be gifted by God. God can gift you with the voice of singing. God can gift you with the gift of healing. God can gift you with the gift of exhortation. But if we continue to live this Bible, live this life, we will come across a time in our lives where we will begin to question God. But we've been taught that we should question God. But when we look throughout the Bible, great mighty men of God has questioned God. But it's one thing to question God, but it's a whole other thing when you charge God as being foolish. Come on now, talk about it. It's okay to question God. God, why am I going through this? Elijah was like, Lord, I'm the only one here. God, take my life. Jeremiah was like, Lord, they're not listening to me. David was like, Lord, I'm here all by myself. They want to kill me. Jesus says, Lord, why? Yes, come on. Now you turned your back on me. It's okay. To question God. But it's another thing to charge him foolish. And so John the Baptist, the Bible tells us, sends towards his disciples out to ask Jesus, are you the one that we're looking for? Because John don't understand this. Whether you're John the Baptist, whether you are you, you're John the Baptist, or you are you at this moment, the reality is we all have been through phases, and some of us are there now where we don't quite understand this. I don't understand, Lord, where people are still wearing masks, but when I go to restaurants, I'm the only one with a mask on. We act like the same thing. God, God, I don't understand why I'm still broke, and you've given me increase, but I'm still broke. God, I don't understand this. But when we begin to doubt God, when you begin to question God, when you're struggling with your faith, because the reality is when we begin to question, when we begin to wonder, the issue is we are struggling with our faith. When you're, faith, when you're struggling with your faith, with your faith during the trial of life, there are three things I can suggest that we must do in order to move forward. And the first thing we need to do when we're struggling with our faith is we need faith that is firm in the days of disappointment. We need faith that is firm in the days of disappointment. As I stated earlier, you remember John the Baptist. As I stated, paint the picture, he baptized Jesus. He heard God tell Jesus, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. In other words, John the Baptist saw God move. And he still questioned God. A lot of us, if we sit here today and you're beyond 30 years old, we've seen God move, but sometimes we question God at that particular moment. He's healed you from cancer. He's delivered you from a lifestyle that's not pleasing. But then when things begin to shake in our Christian life, it seems like we lose our faith. Reality is, every believer has moments of having great faith and having major doubts. 
every believer in God. That doesn't make you less of a child of God when you go through those moments. If that's the case, then we wouldn't have stories about these mighty men who lost faith but didn't regain their faith and was able to push past what they're going through. What you said, it's okay to go through your issue, but it is another thing to dwell in your issue. Jesus asked the man, do you believe? He said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. my unbelief. It's okay sometimes to be a believer, but then ask the Lord, Lord, help me because I'm doubting at this moment. At this season of my life, I don't quite understand it and want to deal with it. At this season, my faith may not be where it was 10, 15 years ago, but God, I still believe that you are capable of doing anything Amen. but fail. Reality is the real faith will believe God that it don't matter what predicament you're in. That's why sometimes you say, Lord, I'm about to throw in the towel only to continue to fight this fight. Because you had doubt, but God wants to show you that, you know what, you say you're ready to give up, but I'm going to show you just how strong you are. Sometimes God allows doubt to creep in for you to think you're about to jump off the wagon, for God to show you you're stronger than what you think. That's why God allows you to go through fiery trials and tribulations, because fiery trials are not meant to be easy. The reality is we don't doubt God doing the easy trials of our life. We don't doubt God when we have a red, a past due bill that we know we got a check coming in two weeks. Ooh, let's be honest. We don't doubt God when there's nothing in the refrigerator to eat when we know all we got to do is go across the street. Now, we don't doubt God then. But when that same situation occurs and you see no way out of your situation, that's when we begin to doubt God. But then that's when God can show you just how strong he is. The reason why we need faith that is strong is because we need a, 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 a Rolodex in, a, in our brain. What you mean a Rolodex? The only way your faith is going to be firm in the times of predicaments is you got to remember the things that the Lord has done for you. So when your faith begins to shake because of your circumstances, you can say, Lord, last year, during the pandemic, God, you didn't allow me my house to go on floor closure. Lord, you didn't allow me to go under. Lord, you didn't allow me to get COVID-19. Oh, God, you allowed me to catch COVID and conquer it. God, five years ago, God, when I was addicted to drugs, God, you delivered me from drugs. God, 10 years ago, God, when I used to smoke cigarettes and it was killing my life, you delivered me, God. God, when I was drinking alcohol and was an alcoholic and had cirrhosis of the liver, and you healed me, God. I got a rolling next to say, you know what? You're the same yesterday, you're the same today, you're the same forever. And if you healed me back then, if you delivered me back then, because you're an awesome God, you can make a way right now. You won't because you won't be able to survive at that moment by looking at that moment without remembering That's right. who he is yeah. Yeah. what he's done for you yeah. Yeah. he is the great I am yeah. he is that mind regulator God when I went through that court case and I almost lost my nine mind God and you kept my mind and so right now you think I'm about to fall off the wagon no he's been too right now. And so when you go through that moment when you say, Lord, I don't know about this, let, like the old folks say, when I look back over my life, I think over. and I think things over, my soul says, hallelujah, glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. So, he tells John the Baptist, you got to remember this. John the Baptist is not at home soaking. John the Baptist is not in his car crying like we do. John the Baptist did not hide himself in his master bedroom. He did not ignore phone calls. John the Baptist was in prison. John the Baptist 
was on death row. And as I could look around, none of us are in prison. None of us are on death row. Now, you might be locked up in your mind, but I serve a God who's a mind regulator. You might be locked up in your circumstances, but I serve a God who can deliver you out of your circumstances. You need to faith so much in firm that we need to be like the Hebrew boys when they went to King Nebuchadnezzar. The Bible says that he called the three Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, and that bad Negro, and he tells them, he said, you know what? When the music go, I need you to bow down. But these individuals said, King, I don't care what you do, we not going to bow down. And the king says, who's going to deliver you out of my hands? And they said, I God can deliver us. But then this is the kicker. He said, but if he doesn't deliver us, I'm not going to fall. We're not going to worship you. We're not going to bow. And we need a faith that is so much firm that because the Lord has done it for me before, if he doesn't do it, he's already done enough. Because the Hebrew boys remembered in chapter 1 when they tried to give them the king's meat. They said, you know what? We're going to trust our God. Yeah. We're going to trust him and we're going to eat what we eat. And we believe in our God that he's going to make us look better, sound better, yeah. and be smarter. And God showed them that. And then they remember in chapter 2 when, when the lions did. They knew that Daniel went through the lions then, I believe. I know I'm skipping some things, but Daniel went through the lions then. And these individuals said, we, we've seen them. We've heard how he delivered our people. We've heard how they crossed the Red Sea. we heard how they crossed the Jordan River. He's never left them. He's never forsaken them. And his seed never begged for bread. And so they basically said, you know what? My faith is firm in the midst of the days of disappointment because we will go through days of disappointment. Our days will be tough. I know we going around and say, oh, Lord, the time is going to get better. Days are going to get better. The reality is the Bible says that when you see times like this, this is just the beginning of it, which tells me I know that we hear, oh, it's going to get better. But if it's according to the word of God, times are going to get tough. Times are going to get rough. But we got to have faith that's firm in the days of disappointment. But secondly, we need friends who are faithful witnesses of God's wonder. All right, all right. We need friends who are faithful witnesses right. of God's wonder. The reality is we need to be careful who we allow in our circle. Because the last thing we need in our circle is people who gloat with joy while we're going through issues. Because what it does is it plants seeds of doubt. That's why as children, we have to be careful what parents say to their children or about their children or around their children. Because words penetrate and sticks to the soul. What you mean? If you continue to tell that child you're going to be just like your ugly daddy. As they get older, they're going to think that their daddy is ugly, and they're going to believe that they are ugly. Why? Because words penetrate. It's right here in the text. The Bible says that John the Baptist sent his two friends out. The two friends went up to Jesus, and they asked Jesus. They said, Jesus, are you who you say you are. But in the midst of that, they was able to see what Jesus was doing. Which tells me, when, when, when you are struggling, you need some friends who can bring back or can give you a testimony that will uplift your spirit. What do you mean? If I'm struggling with something, I need my friend to testify that you're going to be okay. Why? Because the Lord delivered me from what you're going through. And since my God it's not a respect of person. If he delivered me, he can also deliver you. And this is what we have to understand. Is John the Baptist was not a lay member. John
John the Baptist was not that person in the crowd. No, John the Baptist was a leader and he still needed encouragement. Now, I'm going to speak right there. I don't care if you're a ministry leader. I don't care if you're a pastor, a preacher. There will come a day that you will need encouragement. Because the reality is you are yet housed in flesh. And since you are yet housed in flesh, you still live this life. You still deal with issues of life. You will need times in your life where you will need somebody to speak a word to you to say, you know what? You're doing a good job. You know what? Just hold on just a little while longer. You know what? The Lord is going to deliver. The Lord is going to change your circumstances. Continue to hold on. John the Baptist knew who Jesus was. But he still needed his friends. You all got long, we have long relationship with the Lord. But we still need people who's there for us. We need people when they see us struggling to pray for us. But old folks, you said that song, somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time to pray from me. Because at that moment, you probably was the one praying for everybody. But then at that moment, you needed somebody to pray for you. I'm glad they thought enough about me to pray for me and had me on the back, took the time to pray for me. But then the song said, and I'm so glad they prayed. Because I understand the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Which means if you're praying for me earnestly, you're praying for my strength, you're praying for my well-being, and you have that relationship with the Lord, my spirit has no choice but to feed it to it, to bring it in, and to strengthen me. Because we all struggle. We go through moments of discouragement. I'm up here preaching, but I go through my moments of discouragement. But then I can feel when there's prayer going for me. You can feel when you with somebody is praying and making sure that God keep them because the reality is everybody don't want to see you succeed. Everybody don't want to see you prosper. Everybody don't want to see you move in ministry. Some people feel like you don't need to be doing what you're doing. That's why John the Baptist ended up in this situation. He was preaching, proclaiming the word, doing right, and they didn't want to hear him anymore. Reality is, you are going to have people against you. But when you have people against you, we need to have a circle like John the Baptist, have some friends who can go, because one thing about these friends, they didn't go to nobody else, but they went to Jesus. The Bible says, and when they got to Jesus, which means they didn't go talking about him on their way. Oh, man, I knew John wasn't the same as he said he was. I knew he was just preaching. I knew he didn't have it all together. No, they took it to Jesus because they understood that their friends had doubt, but they needed somebody that could pull them together and could nobody do it but the Lord. And I'm grateful that I have friends, I have people who can pray to the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, strengthen him up. I think about the paraclete and Mark the second chapter. The Bible says that this man was buried. The Bible says that his four friends carried him to the house where Jesus was. And the Bible tells us that the house was so full that these friends took him to the roof and tore the roof down and laid him down. But what's amazing, the Bible said Jesus didn't say Paraclete, get up first. No, the text says Jesus saw their faith. Yeah, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who faith did he see? He saw the friend's faith who brought him to him. And Jesus basically was saying, you know what? If your friends can come to me in prayer for your well-being, then I'm going to listen to their prayer and I'm going to change your situation. 
situation. Some of my situation changed because somebody prayed for me. And Jesus understood that their friends, those friends, was willing to do whatever it took to make sure that they got their friends to Jesus. And that's what we need to do. We need to do whatever it takes to make sure our unsaved loved ones, our unsaved family members can come to Jesus so they can experience the healing power of Jesus. They can experience deliverance so their souls can be set free. Because in that story, the Bible didn't say he, because of their faith you was healed. No, the Bible said because of their faith. He said your sins are forgiven. Because your friends wanted your soul saved first. I'm going to make sure your soul is forgiven. They, what Jesus was saying, there are certain things more important than physical needs. There are more things important than financial gain. What profit a man to gain this world and lose his soul? So because of the friend's faith, Jesus tells this paraclete, your sins are forgiven. We need friends who's willing to seek the Lord on our behalf, who's willing to pray and get down on their knees, prostrate, and say, Lord, such and such is going through. Lord, sister, such and such healer. Lord, I know she's suffering. Lord, you know it, God. But, Father, I'm standing in that gap for her. John the Baptist couldn't go see Jesus. The reality is when we going through sometimes we ain't trying to talk to Jesus. We ain't trying to pray. We don't want to get on our knees because we don't understand why we're going through it. I ain't going to, I guess I must be the only one. And when time got hard, I didn't have the strength to pray. I didn't want to pray. Because they like the more I prayed, the worse it got. But when I stopped praying, I thank God somebody started praying. Because they understood your purpose is bigger than your predicament. That's what we have to understand. Our purpose is bigger than our predicament. Y'all, I'm almost done. When your faith is struggling, you don't just need faith to be firm in days of disappointment. We don't just need friends who are faithful witnesses of God's glory. But finally, we need to find, this is tough, we need to find fulfillment in the praise of other people. We need to find fulfillment in the praise of other people. The two men that went to Jesus Ask Jesus the question, are you the one? Or do we look for another? I read this next statement. Next statement. Jesus didn't say a word. It's right here in your text. The Bible says in verse 21, after they asked that question, at that very hour, <laughs> he started working. The Bible says, he cured many of infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirit, and to many he gave sight. Man, preach my mess. He said, you know what? I'm not going to say nothing. I need you to see it. I can show you better than what I can tell you. And so, what's amazing is after Jesus does this, then he begins to speak. Basically what Jesus says without saying it, John, I, right now, I'm not going to change your situation. Because if Jesus wanted to, we've seen in the text, all he had to do was speak a word. And the situation would have changed. But he said, go tell him about everything that's going on for other people. He said, go and tell him about what, what you've seen happen to other people. He basically tell him, look, you've seen Sister Jane get delivered. 
brother. You've seen brother Craig get healed. You've seen brother Boleg get saved. He said, you've seen God change that situation. And what he said is tell John the Baptist, you know what, I know you discouraged, but this should encourage your heart. Because I've done it for somebody else, and since I ain't a respective person, you should have enough right there to celebrate. Because the word said, rejoice with them that do rejoice. And what he was saying at that moment, you need to be excited for who I am, for what I'm doing for somebody else. All right, all right, all right. That goes against what we believe or what society teaches us. Society wants us to have everything. We say, I, I, I'm happy, you know, you know how we do it. I'm happy for him, but I can't really be happy for him. I can't fully, oh, I'm glad for him, but I can't fully be glad for him. But yet Jesus says, because, oh, <laughs> because I want my situation to look like this. I'm grateful that they got all this, but that need to be me. That should be me. They got the good marriage. That should have been me. I'm more deserving of that marriage. I should have got that promotion. I've been here longer than them. I, I understand he, they should have picked me. I'm happy for them, but, but they, 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 y'all know I'm more qualified. But he tells John the Baptist, he tells his friends, he said, you tell John the Baptist, you tell them you tell him that I'm killing him. Am I who I say I am? These people are being delivered. These people's eyes are opening up. These people are being set free. And what he was telling them was go back and give this message to John the Baptist. Because this should be enough for John the Baptist to sit in this situation and know that I am God, that I am the Messiah, that I am the one who was to come and is to come and will come back again. And that's a word for us right now. I don't care what you are going through. If you see somebody that the Lord is blessing, you need to be excited for that person because sometimes your deliverance may be in how you respond to another person's situation. That's why God tells Joe, he said, pray for your friends. In other words, he said, look out for their well-being. Because what God was telling Joe, seek out their well-being. Don't worry about your skin decaying. Don't worry about your children dying. Don't worry about that you lost everything. In spite of all that, I still need you to pray for your friends. And that's a mighty word for somebody. I don't care how low your circumstance is right now. You're still required to do what God has called you to do. Because the reality is, one thing has nothing to do with the other. It was amazing. But with Job, the Bible says that when he prayed for his friends, then his deliverance come. Maybe some of them hadn't been delivered right now. It's because we hadn't prayed for our friends. We hadn't prayed for those who need prayer. John the Baptist was in prison, but Jesus' last statement says something that's real mighty. He says, Blessed is he who has not fallen now the King James Version and New King James says offended. But if you have a New International Version, it says has fallen away because of me. What Jesus was saying is blesses the person who's not giving up on me or who's doubt completely who I am that they decided to turn away from me. Because what he was saying is what Peter tells us is that if we suffer with Christ, and if we die suffering for Christ, in the end, we're going to reign with him. But if you give up before God can move, then you might have missed out on your blessing. And you might have just then put yourself in a worse predicament. So in my final words, y'all, I'm done. I quite don't quite understand it. If you continue to live, you ain't going to continue to not understand some things. That's what the old folks used to say. You understand it better by and by. When you're struggling with your faith, 
Be faith that is firm in these hard times. Remember all that the Lord has done for you. Remember how he delivered you. How he set you free in the past. And allow that to strengthen your faith. Because it's nothing wrong to go through seasons of doubtfulness. But it's a thing if you stay in that season. But have faith. Remember what he's done for you. Surround yourself with friends who are witnesses of God's wonders. Yeah. Surround yourself with believers. Yeah. Don't go through then you want to call Pookie and Ray Ray and them who don't have a relationship with the Lord and tell them to pray for you. Because they don't understand the power of God. They don't understand how God can open doors, how God can make a way. They, can't, they don't have a testimony to tell you, baby, hold on, because if the Lord doesn't deliver you, just know he's still God because he's done it for you before. But then in our seasons, let us be excited when God blesses other people. Yeah. Because that's our sign right there that if God can bless them, and he's not a respectful person, yeah. then I know that he can do it for me if it's in his will. Yeah. So am I closing? I don't understand it. But it's not meant for me to understand it. But at the end of the day, it's up to me to believe that he is God. He's capable of doing anything but fail. Lord my God, I thank you today, Father. Father, I thank you Because in my seasons of doubt, you've given us examples in a word that lets us know that we can conquer our doubts. Just when Jesus asked them to believe, he said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Yeah. Father, we have believers right now that are struggling with their belief right at this moment. Father, help them in this season. Let them know, God, that they are not by, they, by themselves. They are not the only ones who are struggling at this moment with the reality of life. But God, we also know, God, that with you, we are able to do be more than conquerors. And so, Father, when we don't understand it, let us remember that you are God, that you are awesome, that you're a way maker, that you're a burden bearer, that you're a mind regulator, that you're a God that delivers and sets free. Let us remember that. Let us, God, walk in the excitement and joy of others, knowing, God, that you can do it for us as well. Because those are testimonies of your power. And God, let us have a circle that when they see us struggling, that when they see us wavering, that they will come to you in prayer. Seeking our well be. Father, I ask you, God, those who are under the sound of my voice are viewing us online, God, that you ease their doubts. You strengthen their faith. Father, we thank you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask that. Say amen. I mean, maybe someone is viewing us online that they may be struggling and don't have a relationship with the Lord. If you're that person right now that's here or watching us, I invite you to a relationship with Christ. If you're that person. I ask you to stand on type in the comment section. Tried it your own way. But your way didn't work. I 
but I want you to try Jesus. He can do it for you. You say, Pastor, I'm saved, but I'm in need of a church home. Those, if you're viewing online and you are in need of a church home, you're looking for the perfect church, this is not the place for you. Made mistakes. We make mistakes. As leaders, myself and Pastor Chris, we have issues. But we serve a God who's perfect without any issue. This is a place you want where you can grow, where we can grow together. I encourage you to connect with encouragement to me. We're here, we love to grow with you. Hey Amen. We thank God for all of you as we begin to transition to our memorial service. We'll be led by Pastor Chris as we remember what the Lord has done for us. Receive as you come. tracks you grew up on, doesn't matter what your bank account says, doesn't matter if you have a job or unemployed, doesn't matter if you're a crackhead, dopehead, alcoholic, doesn't matter if you suffer from Alzheimer's, whosoever yes. believe in him shall not perish, shall not experience that eternal separation from God, yes. shall not be utterly condemned, but he gives this guarantee that you shall have eternal life. And not just eternal life, eternal life with him. Yes. So if that is you and you have not made that open profession of faith, saying, Lord, I believe you, I take you at your word that you are the son of the living God that you came, that you lived, you tabernacled amongst us, that you hung, bled, and died for me, and not just died, but you rose and you're coming back again. If you have not made that profession of faith in him, your salvation is not secure. It's not secure. Why hold off for tomorrow what you can do today? Tomorrow is not promised to you. But he makes it simple for us. He says all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. They have to come together. You have to confess it and believe that the Lord, he is God. That he died. And so if that is you, our virtual viewers, I declare for you to speak those words out into the atmosphere. Lord, I believe you. I believe that you came and you died for my sins. I believe that once I confess in my faith in you, that you will cleanse me through and through. I can't make it on my own. I can't save myself. But I believe that you are able to do it. So I am trusting and depending on you that I I need you. I need you, God. I thank God that we don't have to do anything. All he 
he asks is for a living sacrifice. All he asks is for us to believe. He died so that we may live. And I hope that you will make that statement of faith. That you will experience his life and then more abundantly. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Reed, for affording this opportunity. I hope that those of you that are being led to accept the free gift of life, that you will receive it while you have. Amen. We are here at the point of our worship experience where we are able to come to this sacred table. What we call here at Encouragement Temple Ministries, the Believer's Table. Yeah. Where those who have openly committed themselves, profess that they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Where we come to this table and we remember the selfless sacrifice. We do it in obedience to our God. He says, do this in remembrance of me. And so that is what we're going to do at this very moment. But before we take part of that, I do want to read scripture that we always read every first Sunday. It's coming from 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, beginning at verse 23 through 34. 1 Corinthians 11 chapter 23 through 34. I hope that you stay with us even as we read this and commemorate our Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done. This is what it says. For I received from the Lord that which I also deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Yes. But let men examine himself. And so then let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the body. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord so that we may not be condemned along with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat at this table, I'm adding, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let them eat at home so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. But about the other things, I will set in place when I return. That is the word of God for God's people. You can be seated in his presence. I'd like to take this moment and this opportunity to invite you as you are reflecting on what the words of scripture has commanded and uh, calls for us as believers to do, that you would just solemnly take this moment to pray unto the Lord. He says to examine yourself before you take this bread. Yeah. Look over your life. Think about any hard areas. Just take a moment and pray unto the Lord. Ask for forgiveness. And even as you are praying, I'm going to pray over us all. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, how we thank you for the selfless sacrifice yes. for your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we are at this table on this day that you have ordained. Father, in obedience to you who said, do this in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we thank you for the selfless sacrifice of your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, who allowed the crown of thorns to be placed on his head, who allowed blood to stream from the top of his head all the way down his body, who endured the nails in his hands and in his feet, who endured the sword that was thrust into his side, oh God, the spear. Father, we thank you that he went through it all for us. Now, Father, we ask for the forgiveness of our sins because we know that we mess up regularly, God. Yes, God. 
But Father, we thank you that the love of Jesus Christ and his blood, it flows to the lowest valley. It goes to the highest mountain. It gives us strength from day to day as the song reminds us, and it shall never lose its power. God, we thank you that the blood still works. So Father, cleanse us right now as we go before this table, both the virtual and in persons that will take of both this bread and this drink that you have provided, Father. We ask that you will bless and help us to never forget what you've done for us. Mm. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. Pastor Reed is going to help serve the elements to you. For those of you that were partaking, you can gently just raise your hand and he will come and serve you. For our virtual viewers, we thank God that you are joining us even in this moment as we partake of these elements. If you have not had the chance to do so, please Take this moment at this very time to go and grab something that will be symbolic to you, even as you are going through this commemoration with us virtually, a wafer, a cracker, some juice, something. But make sure that you are a believer when you partake of this so that you don't eat or drink damnation, condemnation unto your soul. We're going to move forward, and Pastor Rita is going to serve us even as you are grabbing your elements. Pastor Rita. Father, we know 
that nothing is impossible with you. Father, so right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, we know that the vessels, the blood vessels, the lungs, and everything that is connected, oh God, that you have orchestrated everything, and it must fall under subjection to your voice. So, Father, according to your will, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that breathing shall improve in the name of Jesus, Father, that you will touch, that you will go to that hospital, that you will go down that wing, oh God, that you will go down that place, oh God, to that room specifically, Mr. Joseph's room, oh God, that you will be in that place, that every nurse, every doctor, every physician, every medical tech will know and understand, oh God, that they will also, too, stand in agreement with him that there shall be improvement because you, O oh Lord, are able to do great and mighty things. You are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask for, think, or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. So, Father, right now, increase even the faith of Mr. Joseph, hallelujah, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that he will hear your voice and he will trust you for everything and doubt you for nothing, O oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, that you will reveal even to the doctors what is causing the issue. Father, and when they don't understand, help them to continue to trust you. Where there is doubt, help their unbelief. Father, we thank you for the victory for whatever your will is. We know it's what's best for Mr. Joseph, best for Miss Joseph, best for the people of God. Father, help us to continue to hold your hand. My God. Your never changing hand, Father. We thank you because you have all the power. You are Jehovah Rapha. Mm -hmm. The God who heals. So we call you by name. Jehovah Rapha. We need you, God. Heal. To heal, set free, and deliver. According to your will, give the testimony that it was nobody but Jesus. Yeah. Father, we thank you that you have heard us. And you will answer. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we declare it to be so according to his will. Amen and praise the Lord. Amen. Be encouraged, Sister Joseph. Be encouraged and stay in prayer. Allow the Lord to work in and through you and to reveal the things that he has for you. Amen. Even as we are still lifting her up in prayer, uh, we ask that you all, as we continue in our worship experience, just continue to pray. Continue to pray even as we're worshiping. Make sure that as you're praying that you are also taking this opportunity to continue your act of worship by way of giving. By way of giving. Uh, we know that it, we, uh, many have fallen on hard times, but we also know that our God is the one that shall supply all of our need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He says that he already knows what you have need of even before you ask. Yes. So we thank God that we serve a God who is omniscient. That means he knows all things. And so as you're preparing your best offering, your best gift, as the Lord has led you to do so, we ask that you will smile as you're getting ready. Smile and sing joyfully in your spirit, even as you're going on to the PayPal and cash apps. Yes. We ask that you will Smile, knowing that the Lord will restore back to you all that you desire to give unto him because you have decided to trust him even with your resources. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and pray over the offering. Yes. Thank you, my little helper. Um, he's going to go forward. Um, and just pause for a moment so I can go ahead and pray over the gift. Lord, how we thank you for every perfect gift that we have. We thank you that you are the one that continues to give even when we stop. Father, we pray that you would bless every person, oh God, in the name of Jesus. That you would touch, oh God, their bank accounts, oh God. That you would trust their re uh, uh, touch their resources, oh God. We know that we can't do much with our little, but we know we put it in your hands that you can increase, oh God, that you can do a lot with a little, even as you did with uh, the five loaves, oh God, and two, uh, the, two, the two fish and five barley loaves, oh God. We thank you that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly. So, Father, we ask that you would increase and help those that are struggling with their giving. Father, that no matter what is given, that they will know that you will receive it 
as long as it's done with a cheerful heart. Father, we love you and we thank you so much. We bless your name. And we pray that no one will go lacking because they chose to partner with you today. But that you will return back to them according to your will. That you will wow them this week, God. Do it big for them. In the name of Jesus. Because they trusted you with their resources. Father, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We have some upbeat music playing as we give to the Lord. I have mine too, so don't forget about me. Who have endured and, and continue to uh, uh, make things work, 
in, in the covenant of marriage. Let us know how long you've been married. Um, I believe that is it. I, ho I think I'm not leaving anything else. I know we want, to join, want you to join us for Bible study on Wednesday. We still will have Bible study on Wednesday. So come on out. Join us. 7 o'clock p.m. Everything is like 777. Seven, seven. That's complete. Come and join us on uh, uh, this coming Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. for Bible study. As we continue to explore the text, we will not be in the room. But we'll be in somewhere else. And you will find out where we will be when you come on Wednesday. Amen. Just bring your Bibles and bring some friends. Bring pen and paper so you can study the word together with us. I want to remind you all before I leave uh, 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 this podium. I want to remind you all of what Encouragement Temple is all about. Encouragement Temple is the place where Christ is edified through our worship and our witness. Where believers are empowered through the preached gospel and discipleship and where the community is enlightened on God's saving grace to all. Please govern yourself according to those announcements. Please make yourself available. Masks uh, are, are recommended. Uh, masks are, are strongly recommended. Uh, not necessarily required, but we hope that you will come and join us on one or all those occasions. I'm going to turn you back into the hands of Pastor Reed, uh, even as he gives us the blessing and the benediction. We got that gospel groove going on. Also, uh, not a member, but my biological father's birthday is also in the month of April. Uh, we can read. I will be here for what for him. Sorry, mama. Uh, but y'all <laughs> keep him in prayer. Um, those of you, uh, sister, <laughs> sister Joseph, uh, I know as Coco, she's our e member. So Coco, stay, stay encouraged. Fifi, we thank God for you and all our virtual viewers. God bless you. We ask y'all again, as Pastor Chris said, April 15th, just come and celebrate with us as we give glory to the Lord. Uh, that's all. We ask everybody to stand. Well, if you want to say it, say that. To the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to the only wise God, be glory. Honor, dominion, and power. Repeat up to me. May the Lord wise between me and me while we're absent one from another. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them be encouraged even though you don't understand it. Don't lose your faith. We'll see you this Wednesday at 7.30.